What's up? So I wanted to share this here with with y'all. And uh and just with the resonance in my voice, I wanted to send out a uh a massage, a, a specific message, um, a unique one, uh, one to certain people who, who are listening, really listening and, and engaging the, the inner standing. So yeah, this is a shout out to all you uh, real motherfuckers, as I like to say. Uh, I just I just watched Zen Atman, uh, his I don't know 16 minute video or whatever, and uh, that that was timely as well as, of course, uh, perfectly in sync, and uh, it just. Uh, it's very needed to have uh, that levity, um, that reminder of not just who he is, but uh, the energy that, that he trans <laughs> transmits, transmutes, transcends. That was beautiful. And then also, uh, shout out to Danny Skylark for her, her <laughs> latest video. And like, we're gonna kinda get into, uh, he, he, this, this person here, Greg Braden, talks a little bit about, uh, how, how, what happens when, whenever we transmute, uh, whenever we, uh, go all the way into the heart and, just send love out to, to whatever um, kind of an effect anything has upon us. Uh, going out of the mind, going back into the heart. And uh, this, this, is, this is exactly what, what Danny did. Uh, turned something uh, <laughs> stupid <laughs> into something beautiful, into a piece of art. Which ties back into uh, Zen's video and uh, you know, life is art. How can you fail art? How can you fail? <laughs> you can't really fail life unless you uh, decide. <laughs> so you don't want to be a part of it anymore. But that's that's not failing. There's there's this is this is the mentality thing that we're um, freeing ourselves from, uh, breaking the chains. Yes, we are breaking the fucking chains that that once binded us. So yeah, before I start this, also I just wanted to share uh, one of my experiences recently, uh, kind of from an inspiration <laughs> of Danny Skylark, and uh, so I, I I just took a, a, a super ice cold shower. And I went outside, and yeah, it was pretty cold that day. Uh, it was just a few days ago. And oh, now now it's actually, you know, decent out, like forties uh, and fifties. But uh, a few days ago, it, it was rather cold, and there was a brisk wind. So I was a uh, barefoot, and I just had shorts on, uh, and, I, and I went out to start my vehicle. And let it let it warm up. And uh, someone drove by and they saw me. And uh, how how peculiar a, a a vision that they saw. They they felt the need to yell at me. That's a good way to get sick. Dumbass. 
And of course, like they had a lot of uh, hate like spewing out of them because you know, uh, as within, so without, and uh, they're basically projecting their sickness out because they're unable to deal with it. So this was just a uh, very humorous. Uh, it's like, oh my god, like, why, why do you have to be driving away as I'm going back inside? And so that we can't have any kind of a interaction or dialogue, so that I can let you know how full of shit you are, how, how full your cup is, and maybe I can help you release some of that shit inside. Via one manner or another, you know, we we can go the nice route and, and see if that works, or or we can go the direct route where. Uh, you, you combust. And you have a purge happen. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter to me. <laughs> Either way, you're going to gain clarity. So, uh, so it is. Okay, yeah, so we'll play this here. And I'll stop and, and you know... Uh, shed some clarity uh, onto the wordage and then also uh, I, I have a card that I, that I drew and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to reading wh what it has to say because uh, that specific animal has been with me uh, for a very very long time very very long time The ancient Essenes tell us in their texts 2,500 years ago, very precise language, that every human lives in this earth in three worlds at the same time. Okay, and I did have this uh, zoomed in a little bit, but evidently... That's not going to happen. Or I went back. So yeah. The Triune. The world around us is nothing more and nothing less than a mirror of what we have become within. This is absolutely the case. <clears throat> but it's not but it's not become it, it's as within so without as it, it's, it's a verbiage you know it's an action it's a it's a uh, it's a flow it's a sine wave it is always reflecting what you are within not what you've become not what you were always the the monad the completion always reflecting that we live in the world of thought the world of feeling and the world of emotion and we're talking <sighs> ah once again and this goes into the uh, hermetic the hermetic teachings uh hermes that's the thrice great <laughs> the the realm of the mind the realm of thought the realm of feeling there are many layers that we can dissect them and we can you know uh, differentiate them but essentially they all flow into each other and, and dance with each other. So this dissecting is something that we uh, are coming out of because it's it's something of the past. It's, it's something that um, we have been indoctrinated into. 
is picking apart the pieces and, and forgetting the the whole picture and how it all correlates and flows together. actually say it to us when these three become one when the thought and the feeling and the emotion are merged are married together into a single potent force then when you say to the mountain move the mountain will move now I used to believe that this was a metaphor and now I have seen in the monasteries of Tibet and I've seen with the holy and the sacred people in Bolivia and Peru and the native traditions of the desert southwest in the medicineless hospitals in Beijing, China. This is not a metaphor. It is a literal fact. When thought, feeling, and emotion become one, we literally can change the stuff our world is made of. We can rearrange the atoms of matter through the belief waves that emanate from our heart. So the question is... <laughs> and once again, this wordage, you know, What is the uh, f focal point? What is the origin point that creates the ripple effect? Creates the ripples that uh, eventually uh, become manifest reality? Where does that begin? Where does that end? Does it end? Is there an end or beginning? Um, is there just an Ouroboros? And does it consistently flow? Are there Ouroboruses within Ouroboruses? Concentric <laughs> circles within circles? Uh, the, the Russian dolls within the dolls within the doll. Within the Tao. Within the Tao within the all. It's all Zen. It's all perception and how you choose to perceive your reality. What you choose to make real. What you choose to go along with. That's, that is what you choose to make real for you. So, if you want to change your circumstance, stop going along with the scripts and the bullshit. Start creating. Start flowing. Start swimming within your mind, within your innermost feelings. Attune. Integrate. Transmute. And then you can transmit a clearer image and feeling. And see the reflection being mirrored back at you. And uh, it becomes a very beautiful thing. And yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll get into that here in a minute. It's when we are experiencing judgment in ego, what is that saying to us really? Well, the first thing it's telling us is that we are not in our heart because the heart has no judgment and the heart has no ego. Yes. When we are experiencing those, those qualities, uh, it is coming from our mind. It's coming from our inner child. It's coming from our fear, from our families, our perceptions, our conditioning. Nice. But it's not coming from our heart. Yes, um, and that's not necessarily just like the mind, it, it, it's the engagement, how we choose to engage the mind. So we've been uh, taught to engage the mind in certain ways, 
And so it goes into these avenues and pathways. But when we strengthen the bridge between the mind and the heart, then we choose to engage in, in new avenues and pathways and, and allowances, allowing the mind to go back into the heart, allowing our perception to see what is really occurring in every moment, no matter if it's, you know, quote unquote, good or bad, because there's really no such thing. It's, it's a perception. How do we choose to perceive? How do we choose to see something for what it really is, that the, the root causalities and then whenever we can really see the roots, there's no, the good or bad dissolves because we just see it as it is. Oh, this is where this is stemming from. Even if it's a, a you know, quote unquote, bad ex expression projected at us, we were able to see, ah, oh, this is what you're dealing with. This is where you're coming from. This is what you have been led to and hopefully can transmute with uh, certain engagements and interactions with certain individuals who, uh, who are able to transmute your shit into a clarity and a beauty of uh, just isness, it just it just fucking is, but seeing the roots and the causalities it will uh, it will take you on a path of understanding and, and gnosis. And back to the origin point. When something hurts us in life, when something crosses our path that causes us pain, our first reaction is to move away from it, to say, I don't want that. And that is when the judgment comes in. If we can embrace the experiences when someone or an experience hurts us in life, not that we like the experience or we want to have it again, but the ancients say that we should bless the experience. And this sounds very strange, to bless the things that hurt you. But here's what happens. When we begin to bless the things that cause us the pain, the blessing is simply the acknowledgement. When you say, I bless the person who, uh, who has just been dishonest with me. Uh, I bless the person who is... Uh, violated my trust, betrayed my confidence. And you say that again and again, and you say it out loud. What begins to happen is the verbal expression brings the physical energy up from the heart into the body. And soon your body becomes warm, and you have tears in your eyes, and you say, I bless this person, I bless this person. And it is the blessing that relieves the charge of the judgment. And for sure, <laughs> this shit's easier said than done, but for sure, this shit uh, transforms y your, your reality. It brings you back into the heart, directly back into the moment. And uh, like, like he will say probably right after this is, you know, the, the moment is all we have. And so whenever you're brought back into the moment, you're brought back into the stillness. This is uh this is what 
what we out here doing, uh, being the alchemist, being the shaman, transmuting, and tr and tr eventually transcending. But but first comes comes the the transmuting. seeing things for what they really are. And seeing why. <laughs> this, this is another huge thing. Seeing why we are seeing it. Really understanding what the message is for us in the moment. And then we can truly come from a place of, uh, from the heart, but also from a place of knowingness and, and give guidance to others to, uh, to help them, to guide them back within themselves to, to what is occurring within themselves that, that is having them have a certain reaction. And a lot of times, most times, you know, people are going to resist and, and that is going to be what persists in their reality. But whenever they finally catch on and finally make that like distinct feeling happen, it's connecting the image and the feeling. And this is another thing that uh, Zen said in, in uh, the video I watched of his. Is uh, connecting the image and having that. Focusing on expressing the image. And that will uh, make it easier to, to have the wordage come about to, to flow and this is, comes back into the hermetic teachings and you know what what reality is and the realm of the mind the realm of the image and whenever we can have a clear picture a clear image then oftentimes if if, if we can attach the feeling clearly with the image then the expression comes out and uh, if we allow that expression to come out without judgment and just the flow, this is what art is. This is what beauty is. This is what grace is. This is what we out you for. To be conduits of this. For just a moment, and that's all we need, because for just a moment when the charge is relieved, we can replace the hurt with something else. And the ancients say that that something else is what we call beauty. Yes. Beauty is a powerful force in our world. And it already exists everywhere. The ancient Essenes and the Native Americans alike. They say that beauty is already everywhere in everything. Our job is to find that beauty, to seek it out. So rather than judging the experiences, when they come to us, if we can look at each experience as a blessing, and when we find ourselves hurt, say, again, yes, I feel hurt, so acknowledge it first. Secondly, what is this hurt saying to me? Exactly. What voice am I hearing? What does it tell me about my life? And bless the hurt now that is giving us information about ourselves. As we begin that experience, it is much easier then for our thoughts, feelings, and emotions to become one so that we can move that mountain when it comes across our path. The question then that the scientist asks is if we know the experiences work, if we know that when one person or a group of people come together and they share a common experience in their heart for a period of time, such as the International Peace Project in the Middle East, where people came together to feel the feelings of peace during the Lebanese-Israeli War in the early 1980s. During the time, they created those feelings. Statistically, terrorist activities dropped to zero. 
crimes against people declined, emergency hospital visits declined, traffic accidents declined. And so the scientists ask, if this prayer is so powerful, then why didn't it last? And this is the crux, the secret of the ancient traditions that has been missed by so many people today. Because this experience in our heart was viewed by the scientists as something you do for a moment in time. So you go about your daily life, and at a certain time, you stop your daily life, and you do this heart experience, this prayer. And when the prayer is over, you stop the prayer and go back to your life. And the crux of our most cherished, sacred, and ancient traditions is very clear that this experience of the heart is not something that we do. It is something that we become. Oh, my gosh. And I, I haven't gotten to that point yet in this video, so I just wanted to keep watching and listening, man. That was, uh, ooh. But, uh, it's also, it's also not something completely understood yet by the speaker. Because it's not necessarily something that we become. It's something that we realize that we always were to begin with. And so the becoming is is a uh, is it's the the self realization of what you are of what we all are in, in the, uh, the, the the core. And yes, we have all these manifestations and outer expressions um, in the world. But once we really tap into that core essence, we can see why these outer manifestations are happening. We cannot get caught up anymore in the, the bullshit that's happening. We, we can just see it for what it is and release it instantly we can send love to the person to the experience and learn from it integrate it instantaneously so we 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 become closer and closer to what we always were the, the origin point, the, the purity and the clarity of this that happens. It is something that we live in our lives. Life becomes the prayer. Every moment of every day exactly. is the prayer. And because this modality of prayer, it's called the lost mode of prayer, feeling-based prayer, because the prayer is based in a feeling, and we can have a feeling all the time. We can have a feeling in our cars, driving on the, the highway. We can have a feeling in the office, in the school, with our families, uh, alone in the park. We can always have a feeling, and that means we can always be in prayer. But it's not something that we do in a moment. It's a way of living. It's a way of life. It's something we become. And when we do that, the prayer never ends. And that is the secret to maintaining the powerful effects that are documented by science and, uh, and that the ancient texts uh, in the Essenes tell us are possible in our lives. So yes, he, he, he likes to say something that we've become, but it's just realizing, like I just said, realizing what is happening, what is actually happening. And becoming that, the isness, the monad. <clears throat> and before I read, and I'll give a link to this uh, so you can watch the rest of it. Uh, before I read the card that I pulled, I wanted to share. Uh, I'm not for sure if this was a transmission or channeling. Uh, that that I have this memory from, 
but it is it is about the Essenes, and uh, this is also going to segue, segue into uh, what I want to talk about, which is uh, the living image. And whenever we uh, start to tap into um, reading things, sensing things that are alive, and then realizing, you know, the things that are dead, like, uh, such as the things that we are taught in the indoctrination system. So, uh, one of these things was, uh, the story of, uh, how Jesus, or I, an image, uh, a figure similar to this, led people into, uh, self-cleansing, and so, He had people drink living water as well as dead water. First the dead water to cleanse out the shit, then and then the living water. And this is a fasting experience. So they they did this for about um as been memory recalls, about seven days. And the people uh, had such strong experiences, and some of them had uh, the the parasites within were so uh, well developed that they tried to bring down the host in this cleansing process, and so the uh, the the physical uh, manifestations that happened with this person, uh, the, the the toes started to. Uh, distort and coil and uh, the feet started to coil uh, with this person and so what what this uh, Jesus figure did was uh, warmed some milk in the presence of this person and the the serpent inside was drawn towards this uh, aroma and a life essence, the purity. And so as it came out of this distorted person, Jesus cut immediately cut off the head because that's, that's what we have to do here. We have to cut the head off. Otherwise, we're just, you know, nipping at the body and but but how parasites work how, the, how this uh, system works is you have to have the focal point the initiatory the the initial origin point dealt with otherwise it's going to keep multiplying and existing so you have to cut it off a, at its head I highly recommend everyone to look into the teachings of the Essenes to go as deep as you can go that you're willing to go to flow into it And maybe it will show you what's inside of you. Okay. Card time. A dolphin. Something that I've um, even since very young age in this uh, 
existence. I have uh, drawn pictures of, talked about, uh, educated people about, even at a very, very, very young age, educated people about the dolphin. Keywords. Divine guidance. Greater intelligence. Unexpected help. The appearance of the dolphin card reassures you that hope is on the way. There is a greater intelligence at work that can be perceived. The dolphin appears as guide and helper in many Greek myths. Delphi, the spiritual center of the ancient Greek world world derived its name from the Greek word for dolphin, Dolphinos, because the god Apollo was believed to have led his priests to that sacred place while in the form of a dolphin. The dolphin is also associated with the afterlife rock paintings in the Australian Aborigines depict dolphins aiding fishermen by herding fish into their nets. It was believed these dolphins were souls of the dead returned to watch over their people. So yes, uh, Feel this uh, feeling with the dolphin, with this feeling of, of the swimming that, that's happening now with, with uh, so much that, that's happening um, in the inner realms and being reflected um, outwardly. Swim within this inner gnosis and have a, a new type of communion and transmission happen similar to echolocation. This is a reverberation that's happening. This vibration is uh, you know, started as a tiny ripple and these ripples are becoming waves and waves and waves. They are being felt and more and more people are picking up on it. More and more things are coming through. That are of beauty and grace. And are there to help remind you of what is within you. This is what we doing out here. <laughs> We're helping to remind you what's within you. It's a beautiful thing. So tap into it. Because you are fucking beautiful. So feel that. Feel what you really are. Feel the love. Peace.